Like I said in the last video, more often than not, we're going to be thinking about relations whose domain and codomain are the same. Uh, we typically refer to those as a relation R on a set X. And those kinds of relations have a set of properties that we're particularly interested in. Uh, there are five of them, and we'll talk about them in this video. Uh, first, a relation R on a set X is going to have the property of reflexiveness if every element is related to itself. Another way to say that is for all X in the set X, X is related to X. A relation is, on the other hand, anti-reflexive if no elements are related to themselves. Uh, so I'm going to cook up a few relations here. Let's call them R1, R2, R3, and R4. R1 is the relation A, B, comma, C, C. Uh, I have to tell you that these relations are over the set X. So in the examples, we're going to let X be the set A, B, C. R2 is going to be the relation AA, BB, CC. R3 is going to be the relation AB, BA, AB, BA. And R4 is going to be the relation nothing. R4 is the empty relation, uh, which means it contains no pairs from X cross X. All right, and then of these relations that I just wrote down, R2 is reflexive because it is the only one where every element of X is related to itself. We have A related to A, B related to B, and C related to C. Meanwhile, R3 and R4 are going to be anti-reflexive because no elements of X are related to themselves. In R3, we only have the pairs AB and BA. In R4, we don't have any pairs at all. all. R1 is neither reflexive or anti-reflexive, and that usually throws people for a loop the same time that they realize that a relation can be neither of these properties. Uh, R1 is neither because it contains CC, so it's not anti-reflexive, but since it's lacking AA and BB, it's not allowed to be reflexive either. Another property of relations that we care about is symmetry, where we say that any time X is related to Y, then y is also related to x. For all x, y, and x, any time x is related to y, then y must be related to x. Uh, a relation is anti-symmetric if this condition only holds when x is equal to y. In other words, if x is related to y, then y is not related to x unless x and y are equal. Um, and so here's the way you should be thinking about that. Uh, symmetry basically means as much symmetry as possible. Capital S symmetry means as much lowercase s symmetry as possible. Any time that I have the pair x, y in my relation, I want to be able to also have the pair y, x in my relation. All right, on the other hand, anti-symmetry means I have as little lowercase s symmetry as possible. I would like to be able to say that if x and y are related, then that means that y and x are not related. But think about it. If I have a diagonal pair, in other words, a pair AA in my relation, there's nothing I can do about that. If x, y is, if this is my pair x, y, then it is also my pair y, x, if x and y are both equal to a. All right, so anytime I have a pair like that where the two entries of the pair are the same, I'm going to be able to quote unquote flip that pair. Uh, so anti-symmetry basically says that whenever the two elements in the pair are distinct, uh, its inverse pair is not going to be present in the relation. So of the four relations that we just wrote down, R3 is symmetric. 
let's scroll back up and take a look at take a look as to why. R3 has the pairs A, B, and B, A. So we're able to quote unquote flip that pair A, B to get the pair B, A. It's more correct, I think, instead of saying flip to call it the inverse pair. So for every pair, its inverse is present in the relation. On the other hand, uh, we can see that R1 is not going to be symmetric because we have AB, but we're unable to find its inverse BA. So we're going to say that R1 is not symmetric. Or in fact, it's not even not symmetric, it is anti-symmetric. Because none of the flipped pairs are there. R2 and R4 are both symmetric and anti-symmetric. Let's look at R2 and figure out why it would be both symmetric and anti-symmetric. It's symmetric because every pair in the relation has its inverse. The inverse of AA is AA, the inverse of BB is BB, the inverse of CC is CC. So R2 is symmetric. It's also anti-symmetric because the only way you can have that is on these, uh, I called them diagonal pairs for reasons that we'll, we'll see in a little later. Um, it, because the entries are the same, I have to be able to flip them. There's no way I'm going to be able to get around that. So R2 is both symmetric and anti-symmetric. Uh, for kind of a dumb reason, R4 is both as well, um, because I am able to find the inverses of every pair in this relation, because there are no pairs in this relation. And meanwhile, uh, any time I can find the inverse, the entries are the same, again, because there's nothing in here. There's nothing in here to keep my relation from being symmetric or anti-symmetric. Uh, let's see one more example. Let's call another relation uh, R5, and it's going to be the set AB, BA, and CB. This relation is neither symmetric or anti-symmetric. And the reason that it's neither is because I have AB and BA contributing to symmetry, but then since I can't find the pair BC, CB is contributing to anti-symmetry. Um, but it has to be all of one in order to, to get that name. So uh, since I can't find BC, I'm not symmetric. Um, and since I can find AB and BA, I'm not anti-symmetric. I don't know if these arrows are going to help or hurt, but that's the idea. So A, B, and B, A keep us from being anti-symmetric. C, B keeps us from being symmetric. All right, last but not least, we're going to talk about transitivity, which is the property that if X is related to Y and Y is related to Z, then x must also be related to z. Uh, and you've seen this before in other relations. Um, for example, uh, if x is equal to y and y is equal to z, then x is equal to z. And it's the transitive property of equality. Um, you've also seen it with equivalence in logic. It's what allows us to make substitutions. Transitivity is all about flow. The idea is that I can get from X to Y and from Y to Z, I have to also be able to directly make the trip from X to Z. And if I can't do that, then I don't have a transitive relation. Uh, we can generalize this idea to the idea of a path. A path in a relation X of length N minus one is a sequence X1, X2, dot, 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 Xn, where each element is related to the one after it. So for example, I'll have x1 related to x2, x2 related to x3, x3 related to x4, dot dot dot, related to xn. All right, well, in a transitive relation, if my relation is transitive, then the presence of a path implies that the endpoints are also related. All right, let's see some examples.
Consider the relation. Again, x is the set ABC. Consider the relation AB, BC, and AC. This relation is transitive. In fact, it's kind of the smallest interesting transitive relation. Uh, so I've got A being related to B, I've got B being related to C, and then since I can get directly from A to C, I have a transitive relation. Meanwhile, the relation AB and BC with no other pairs is not transitive. So in this relation I can get from A to B and I can get from B to C, but the edge from A to C is not there and so that makes the relation not transitive. Anytime I have a path between two vertices I have to be able to get directly from one vertex to the other. Uh, I called this the smallest interesting transitive relation because you can go smaller, but it's kind of trivial that it's um, transitive. Uh, so I'll just say coincidentally, the empty set and the diagonal relation AA, uh, BB, and CC are transitive. but uh, they're not transitive for a good reason. Um, they're transitive because there are no paths in these relations, right? Um, so for example, in the diagonal relation, I just have AA, uh, BB, and CC. There's no way to get from A to B and from B to C, so I'm not missing anything between A and C because those, those paths aren't there. Um, so since there's nothing really going on there, uh, it is transitive because it doesn't fail to be transitive. And likewise, with the empty relation, there are no paths, so it doesn't fail to be transitive.